strange sounds recorded in the Earth's stratosphere. What's up in the stratosphere? This question is absolutely valid. Scientists have recorded strange low-frequency sounds in this part of the Earth's atmosphere, but it is not known what they are or where they might come from. Researchers cannot identify them. Scientists at Sandia National Laboratories are sending balloons with microbarometers attached to the stratosphere. All this to monitor the sounds spreading over our heads. Thanks to them. They recorded the mysterious infrasound, i.e. sounds with a frequency too low to be heard by humans. They appear several times an hour on some flights, but researchers cannot identify them. Their source remains unknown. The description and results of research on mysterious sounds were presented at the 184th meeting of the Acoustical Society of America. We live in the lowest layer of the atmosphere, the troposphere. Above it, there is another layer, the stratosphere, extending to a height of about 50 kilometers. Its area is quite calm. It is also not surprising that sounds from the troposphere penetrate into it in various forms. After all, there's quite a bit going on there. Of course, these can be thunder. The acoustic effects of the collision of waves in the oceans, but also the effects of human activity, such as the sounds of explosions. However, some sounds are a mystery to researchers. How do we know about them? Well, we owe a lot here to balloons sent to the stratosphere, powered by solar energy. Balloons that were made of relatively cheap materials. The cost of building one such balloon is only $50. Scientists even laugh that they are practically giant plastic bags with carbon powder added to make them slightly darker. And that's what the propulsion is based on. Of course, they don't have motors powered by solar batteries. But when the sun's rays fall on the dark surface of the balloon, they heat the air inside. Which of course lifts the structure up. These balloons are able to travel really long distances. Thanks to the sun's rays alone, they can rise to a height of 20 kilometers. And thanks to the wind. Balloons, like the scientific instruments they are equipped with, can fly even hundreds of kilometers and land in really hard to reach places. Unless, of course, no one decides to shoot them down on the way. Microbarometers installed on the balloons are used to monitor these sounds. Interestingly, they were first designed for volcano monitoring. And they are able to detect sounds because they feel even small fluctuations in atmospheric pressure, along with expected sounds from human activity and natural processes. Scientists have detected something they cannot identify. There are mysterious infrasonic signals in the stratosphere that occur several times an hour on some flights. But their source is completely unknown, said Daniel Bowman of Sandia National Laboratories. Healthy human brains are much hotter than previously thought. From the engine in your car to the components in your laptop, mechanical systems tend to get hot when they're working hard. Now research has shown that the same can be said for our brains. Their temperature is much higher than previously thought. The new analysis overturns previous assumptions and shows the extent to which temperature varies by brain region, age, gender and time of day. A new study has found that the normal temperature of the human brain fluctuates much more than we thought, which could be a sign of healthy organ function. In men and women, whose body temperature is usually lower than 37 degrees Celsius, the average brain temperature is 38.5 degrees Celsius, and in deeper areas it often exceeds even 40 degrees Celsius. Previous studies of brain temperature in humans have relied on data obtained from patients with head injuries in intensive care, where direct monitoring of the organ is often necessary. 
More recently, a brain scanning technique called magnetic resonance spectroscopy MRS, has enabled researchers to non-invasively measure brain temperature in healthy individuals. Scientists have used a new method for the first time to study temperature variations during the day. New research led by scientists at the Medical Research Council MRC, Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge, UK, has created the first map of brain temperature in a healthy human. This map overturns several previous assumptions and shows the remarkable extent to which organ temperature varies by brain region, age, gender and time of day. Importantly, these results also challenge the commonly held belief that the temperature of the human brain and body are the same. The research also included an analysis of data from patients with traumatic brain injury. It turned out that the presence of diurnal brain temperature cycles strongly correlates with survival. These results can be used to better understand, predict and treat brain injuries. The results of the analyzers were published in the journal, Brain, to study the healthy brain. The researchers invited 40 volunteers aged 20 to 40. In one day, their brains were scanned three times, in the morning, in the afternoon, and late in the evening. Importantly, participants also received a wrist-worn physical activity monitor, allowing genetic and lifestyle differences to be taken into account in the study. In healthy participants, the average brain temperature was 38.5 degrees Celsius, more than 2 degrees higher than the temperature measured under the tongue. The study also found that brain temperature varied with time of day, brain region, sex and menstrual cycle, and age. While the surface of the brain was generally cooler, the deeper structures of the organ were often warmer than 40 degrees Celsius. The highest brain temperature observed was 40.9 degrees Celsius. Degrees Celsius. With the highest brain temperatures observed in the afternoon and the lowest at night. Women's brains were on average about 0.4 degrees Celsius warmer than men's. This difference was most likely due to the menstrual cycle. As most women were tested in the post-ovulatory phase of the cycle and their brain temperatures were about 0.4 degrees Celsius warmer than those of women tested in the pre-ovulatory phase. The results also showed that brain temperature increased with age, especially in deep areas of the organ where the average increase was 0.6 degrees Celsius. The researchers suggest that the brain's ability to cool down may decline with age. And more work is needed to, to investigate whether this fact can be linked to the development of disorders and diseases in the elderly. For me, the most surprising conclusion from our research is that a healthy human brain can reach temperatures that would be diagnosed as fever in other parts of the body. Such high temperatures have been measured in people with brain injuries in the past, but were assumed to be the result of trauma, says Dr. John O'Neill, group leader at the MRC Laboratory for Molecular Biology. We found that the temperature of the brain decreases at night before falling asleep and increases during the day. There are good reasons to believe that this daily variability is related to long-term brain health, which we hope to explore in the future, explains Dr. O'Neill. To investigate the clinical implications of the information obtained from healthy volunteers, the researchers analyzed temperature data collected continuously from the brains of 114 patients who had suffered moderate to severe traumatic organ damage. The average brain temperature of the patients was 38.5 degrees Celsius, but it ranged even more, from 32.6 to 42.3 degrees C. The 
100 patients for whom there was sufficient data to study the circadian rhythms of brain temperature. Only a quarter were found to have them. Focusing on predictors of survival in intensive care, the researchers found that absolute measurements of brain temperature were of limited use. But diurnal variation in brain temperature was strongly associated with survival. Of the patients with a circadian rhythm of brain temperature, only 4% died in intensive care. Compared with 27% patients who did not have such a rhythm, the researchers caution that further research is needed to confirm this association. And so far it cannot be assumed that the circadian rhythm of brain temperature directly increases survival. However, the observed relationship means that monitoring such cycles in patients could be a promising tool for predicting survival. Combined with data from healthy individuals, the study results raise important questions about the use of interventions to modify or control brain temperature in patients. Using the most comprehensive study of human brain temperature to date, we created a map, says Dr. Nina Richojek, MRC Clinician Scientist Fellow of the MRC Laboratory for Molecular Biology, who led the study. It provides a reference against which to compare patient data and could change our understanding of how the brain works. The fact that the circadian rhythm of organ temperature correlates so strongly with survival after severe trauma suggests that 24-hour measurement of brain temperature is of great clinical value explains the researcher. Our work also paves the way for future research on whether the disturbance of the circadian rhythm of brain temperature can be used as an early biomarker for several chronic brain disorders, including dementia, says Dr. Rekajek.